Hello and welcome to another conversation with Professor Choi. Today we're continuing our uh, education on statistics. So uh, today I wanted to have a conversation about something called the empirical rule and Chebyshev theorem. Now this is one of those videos that you need to watch after you have already watched my other video uh, where I explain how to calculate uh, central tendency of data and spread of data. So if you haven't taken that one, you should watch that video. Now in that particular video, I explain how to calculate the mean and the standard deviation for population and for sample. So if you calculate the mean for uh, a sample, the formula is summation of x over n. And if you're going to calculate the standard deviation for sample is square root of x minus x bar square summation divided by n minus 1. So this is what we call the mean and this is what we call the standard deviation. Now, Chebyshev and the empirical rule are things that you use in order to come up with quick probabilities for something or in order to come up with a quick answer when somebody asks you a question if you have a mean and a standard deviation it's pretty easy to make assumptions about the data using Chebyshev and using the empirical rule alright so let's analyze those now according to Chebyshev in something called the Chebyshev theorem for any set of observations the proportion of values that are within k standard deviations of the mean is at least 1 minus 1 divided by k squared. So let's come up with an example. Imagine that you have an x bar equal to 10 and an s equal to 5. So again, an x bar is our mean and our s is our standard deviation. You calculated those for the set of data that you have, okay? Now, according to Chebyshev, it doesn't matter whether the data set is right skewed, left skewed, symmetrical, or uh, any other sort of shape in general. According to him, you can find the proportion of any proportion of data that you want within particular standard deviations of the mean by following this formula. Now, this is not as precise as something like the empirical rule, but the empirical rule only applies to symmetrical data. All right, so uh, imagine that somebody asks you, what percent of data is within 5 and 15? Alright, so what percent of data is within 5 and 15? Actually, 5 and 15 might not work you very well. Let's go to 0 and 20. And that's because it's 2 instead of 1. But here we go. Alright, so what percent of data is within 0 and 20? Okay, now you need to realize that the center of the data here is at 10. So my center of the data is at 10, and I have a standard deviation of 5. So the number 0 is basically two standard deviations to the left of 10, and the number 20 is two standard deviations to the right of 10. So this is what we call x bar plus or minus 2s. So in other words, it's the center of the data plus or minus two standard deviations away, which in this case will be any number between 0 and 20. Okay? All right. Now, according to Chebyshev, the way to answer this is pretty simple. What we need to do is we need to say, okay, well, the proportion of the data that will lie within two standard deviations away is going to be 1 minus 1 over 2 squared. And this 2 is this number here for Chevy Chef. This is what he uses. This is K. 
So if you want to know what proportion of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean for any set of data with a mean and a standard deviation, this is the answer. So it's 1 minus 1 over 4, or 0.75. So 0.75 or 75% of the data would be distributed using this information within two standard deviations away between the number 0 and the number 20. All right, now let's come up with a different example since we're in education so you understand what this means. Okay, and let's keep this the same so you understand that. So let's say that I give my students an exam. Let me use a different color for the exam. All right. Hold on with me for a second here. I got A or you another marker. Okay, so uh, wait, I got another marker right here. All right, so imagine that I, have, I gave my students an exam and the average grade for that exam, which is my X bar, is 70. And my standard deviation for that exam is 10. Now, I don't know whether my data is symmetrical or not symmetrical. So I don't know whether my distribution is symmetrical or not symmetrical. I haven't done any uh, studies uh, for symmetry. And I want to know what percent of my students scored within 70, no, sorry, not within 70, but within uh, two standard deviations away, that would be 50 and 90. So what percent of the data is within 50 and 90, given an X bar of 70 and a standard deviation of 10? Again, 50 and 90, if you put the center of the data at 70, 50 is two standard deviations away, and 90 is two standard deviations away. So the question is asking you, what proportion of the students are going to be between the grades of 50 and 90? And the answer to that, according to Chevy Chef, is this, because this is two standard deviations away. So this is X bar plus or minus 2s. And if you want to find out the answer to that, according to Chevy Chef, you use his rule. So you do 1 minus 1 over 2 squared, and it gives you 0.75. So using Chevy Chef, I can confidently say something like 75% of students scored between 50 and 90. All right, I hope you understood Chevy Chef Theorem. Remember, one of the cool things about watching a video is you can always go back and watch it again. All right, so let's talk now about something called the empirical rule. The empirical rule is more specific and it gives you a better approximation of data, but you have to make sure that your data is, in fact, um, bell-shaped and symmetrical. Now, the way you figure out whether something is bell-shaped or not is you have to basically plot it. Um, now, if you want to figure out whether something is symmetrical, something like the Pearson coefficient of skewness will help you with that. And I have another video, by the way, where I explain how to calculate the Pearson coefficient of skewness so you can figure out the level of symmetry on a particular data set. All right, now, let's try to explain the empirical rule. The empirical rule basically says that for any symmetrical bell-shaped distribution, so it would require your distribution to be symmetrical and bell-shaped, which basically looks like this. And remember, in this particular case, what we're doing is we're putting the frequency of the data. Right now, we're explaining the empirical rule. So we're putting the frequency of the data on this side, and we're putting the data set here, and we are finding the center of the data, which we're calling x bar, because that's the center, that's the mean. 
and we're saying that the data is bell shaped and symmetrical so when you slice it you can say that 50% of the data is on the right side or the higher side and 50% of the data is on the lower side below the mean okay now something similar to this like I just explained is imagine that I did a study and I figured out that my grade distribution is in fact symmetrical okay so um, I got following the previous example an X bar of 70 and an S of 10 okay now this is a kind of breakdown of the empirical rule if you take the center of the data and you want to know what percentage of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean then the way you use the empirical rule is the empirical rule says that 68 percent of the data is going to be within one standard deviation of the mean which is the same thing as saying x bar plus or minus 1s okay so 68 percent of the data will be there 34 percent of the data is to the right side 34 percent of the data is to the left side okay now for uh, two standard deviations away according to the empirical rule 95% of the data is going to lie within that particular area so 34% um, of the data for that 13.5% of the data then 34 and 13.5 all of that stuff adds up to 95 and two standard deviations away from the mean you're going to find 95% of the data 99.7% of the data you're going to find within three standard deviations of the mean all right and again this is a breakdown of each one of those pieces once you keep moving farther and farther out when you want one standard deviation away two standard deviations away or three standard deviations away all right now let's go back to my grades example here and let's try to come up with a question and let's use this empirical rule to come up with an answer so let's say somebody asked me how many students scored between 70 and 100? How many students score between 70 and 100? Now, if the center of my data is at 70, center of the data is at 70. Good so far? I know that this is half of the data. So half of the data, because 70 is at the center, half of the data is going to be left of this and half of the data is going to be right of that so 50% of the grades are going to be right and left from there now this one I don't have to think about too much I could basically say that if the center is at 70 and they want to know between 70 and 100 I could just say well 50% are within that because 70 is in the center, half of the data is going to be to the right, half of the data is going to be to the left. So the answer of how many students scored between uh, 70 and 100 is half of them on the test. All right, now let's come up with uh, one that's a little harder. So instead of doing 70, let's do 60. So the next question now is how many students score between 60 and 100 with my mean being at 70 and my standard deviation being at 10. All right so now 70 is still in the center because that's my x bar. One standard deviation away I'm going to find the number 60 and the number 80. And the question is asking me, how many students score between 60 and 100? 
So the answer to my question is going to be from here, from 60, all the way up to 100. So the answer is this 34% plus this 34% plus that 13.5% plus that 2.35%. Uh, it seems like about 84% is what we should say. So, approximately 84% of the students scored between 60 and 100. All right, by the way, some of the online software might not allow you to be as uh, kind of like courageous here by just putting some, so you may have to go ahead and add all of these. And the actual answer is 83 point eighty five percent or in decimals remember you write that as zero point eight three eight five all right with this example that I did right here assuming that your data set is symmetrical and bell shape you can come up with pretty much any probability that you to figure out proportions of grades or something like that all right I hope uh, my class today was useful, and thank you for tuning in to Professor Choi again. Have a good one.